So in this video, we're going to take a look at Alan's solar and his battery installation at his property. Now we filmed this a few months ago. In the meantime, well, actually for the last 12 months, we've been building a team of experts to help us deliver solar installations nationally. We've been trying different products, finding which work best in different scenarios and different installation techniques. We should be launching this technology onto the website shortly. If you're interested in the meantime, then click the link below. We'll be able to take some details and keep you up to date with the progress. So let's go straight into the video. And if you've got any questions, just ask them in the comments box below. I'm gonna go renewable. Renewable. <laughs> <laughs> So welcome back to another video and this time it's a little bit different. We're back in Alan's garage. Well, last time we were here, we were comparing the Wiesman 100 and the Wiesman 050 models. When we were here on that day, we noticed that Alan had had this solar and battery system installed in his property and we wanted to know a little bit, little bit more about it and share that with you guys. So Alan's gonna talk us through the install, why you had it, the savings he's made, can we discuss what it cost? Yeah, yeah. We can, brilliant. And we're gonna talk about how it works and how it sort of changed your dependence of energy, especially electric, hasn't it? Absolutely, yeah. Cool, so when was it installed originally then? So we, the panels were installed in December and the batteries were installed in April. There was a shortage of parts, batteries, national shortage of batteries. So that's why it took a bit longer for batteries to come. So we've had 32 panels put up on the roof, so it's quite a big system. And then obviously we've got as inverters here and then we've got battery storage. So how that works for us is through the day when we're producing energy, it'll store into the batteries and then also whatever we use in the house, so washing machines, whatever. And then on the night, we then use the batteries. Also, any excess energy will go back to the grid originally it was going back to the grid at about four pence. And then I found out later that there were a different tariff and we've, we're have we now on um, Octopus Agile tariff and that you can pay, get paid a lot more. So the initial, um, what we expected the return to be is now a lot better. Obviously energy prices have gone up as well. Um, so at the minute we're getting up to 20 pence per kilowatt hour back for what we sent at grid. And that's replaced, so there used to be something called the feed-in tariff. Yes. So you used to buy a solar system, and I'm not 100% on this, but I think you, you bought a solar system, had it installed, and any electric that you didn't use, you sold to the grid, and it was a preset rate that was linked to retail price index or inflation. And I think you got that for 20 or 25 years. So customers who've had solar fitted when the um, feeding tariff was active, they can still benefit from that for the next sort of 10, 15, 20 years, depending when they had the install. Yeah. But new customers having in, um, solar installed, that's now changed. So there's a new scheme where, because of the demands on electric and our energy dependence as a country, the energy suppliers are actually buying back any solar that you generate that turns into electricity if you don't use it you can sell it back to the energy suppliers but it's just not a long-term contract is it it changes the the rate that you sell it for yeah that's based on demand and, yeah. and what you get at the moment because of the wholesale price of electricity the price is is very high and obviously that's supposedly going to go up again in in october so we would expect our rate will go up even higher, but it has been up to as much as a pound that they buy it off us for. Right, and you're generating it for free, less the cost of your equipment. Yes. Um, and so your system's a little bit different though, isn't it? Compared to, so our regular domestic system would normally be about four kilowatt. Right, okay. Um, I think, I might be wrong, but most people seem to go to four kilowatt. That's generally linked to the electricity supplier will only give you a certain capacity, won't they, to send back down the grid. Um, so you have to get an application to what's called the DNO, which is a district network operator. So whoever runs the grid in your area, when you have solar installed, you almost have to ask permission to have it installed and they'll want to know the size of the system, the size of the inverter, because if you're generating hundreds and hundreds of kilowatts, you can't necessarily just send that back down the grid. It'll probably overload. 
but your system, whilst the overall is 16 kilowatt, is it? It's about 12 kilowatts. 12 kilowatts, sorry. But it's on two, it's on two different elevations, isn't so it? So it's east-west, yeah. So you would never get the full 12. Yeah, that's right. Also, it's limited with the inverter. So what we've done is, because if you had a south-facing roof, you could get whatever that size of the panels was. So if, say if it was 12 kilowatts, you could get 12 kilowatts. Yeah. But because ours is an east and a west first roof, we would expect that on a morning we'd get one side at roof which is maximum six kilowatts and then later on in the day we'd get a bit more so we might get up to the 8.2 which is this this is limited to and then as the day goes on it'll go back that the sun's on the other side of the house so then we'll go back to where we can maximum we'd better get is like the six kilowatts again yeah um but it works on this system it works really well yeah because on the, on the inverter here it shows the current um generation doesn't it so at the moment you're getting about 7.5 yeah. kilowatts off those panels yeah. now in your property now if you didn't have the batteries you would have to make use of that energy because if not you're selling it to the grid yeah and this is one of the things about solar isn't it is if you buy a solar panel installation it's great if but you have to make some fundamental lifestyle changes like making sure your washing machine your dryer dishwasher if you have one is on in the day what you don't want to be doing is selling electricity in the day to the grid while you're out and generating it all and then you come home from work at night and then you start buying it at a really high rate yeah what's different with Alan's system is and it's this technology has been around for sort of three or four years now is you've got batteries yes and that changes the whole dynamic that, that changes everything so we went in December, when we had the solar panels installed, what were happening was we were getting production fruit day, and then on the night we were buying it from grid. So we were sending energy back to grid, and it was it was it was so annoying because then on the night we were buying energy. Yeah. And then once we got the batteries, that were a game changer because any excess to start with it'll save into the batteries, but then it'll go back to the grid. And there's another thing to mention as well: we've got an electric car. So we've also got that on solar, so it will only charge off the solar energy. Right. So we're using the car for free as well. So there's a lot, there's you know, there's a lot of benefits to having the solar panels. For us, it's been really, really good. Yeah, it's transformed, I, I, it's transformed yeah. isn't it? Because the bit with the batteries would be that, like you said, then if you're generating in the day and you're not in, you could store this into your batteries here. So you've got two nine kilowatt batteries, haven't you? So these are 8.2 kilowatts each. So we've got 16.4 kilowatts um, of stored energy. And then, so you could charge them up in the day. Yeah. Let's just say hypothetically you were out at work. Um, I know you don't work now because you're a YouTuber. <laughs> um, it's not a real job. Um, but <laughs> you're out in the day, you've charged these up, you come home at night and you've been, once your batteries are charged, You've then been selling electric to the grid, so you've been earning some revenue off the panels into the grid. You come home at night and you only draw off your batteries. Yes. What, obviously your batteries are 16.4 kilowatt. What's an average usage at night time? So if you're in, the TV's on, you know, I don't know, the oven's on, you're cooking some tea or whatever. What do you generally draw an hour? So it would depend on the time of year. So when it's light outside, long days you your tea time will be covered in that time so you'll so you're still using your solar energy to power your to power so everything in our house is now electric obviously because we're getting free energy um and then as the as the year goes on and as it gets to darker nights then you'll some of that energy you'll be using from your batteries you know once it gets to tea time so it'll depend on the time of year so obviously when it's light it's you can generate generate a lot more but also you don't need the batteries as much because you okay it, the, the, there's yeah. less dark time if you like um and then in the winter obviously you know you'll need your batteries for longer but at the moment at about eight o'clock in the morning these are charged back up again full because you've not used them the night before because we've hardly used any because we're not get, it's not getting dark until like nine at, we're still generating at like nine o'clock at night. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you so know, you've got no demand so, so on So we're not, we're not taking any power out of the batteries. So we've only got from like nine till half past five. Half past five, maybe quarter to six, that bit. But we've already had us tea. We've already done all the high energy stuff 
right okay. in, in the light time so at the minute for us it's amazing as, as it gets to um the winter months obviously it will you know it's not going to be as good but because we're selling it back to grid and at the minute we've been getting i think it's about 200 pound a month we're getting paid back my direct debits now have gone down there was 300 pound that was going to go up to 450 for your energy bill for my energy bill that was for gas and electric my bill at the minute is set to 10 pound a month that's for my gas and electric because i'm getting about 200 pound a month from the production but also obviously that will change because it depends on um and, and i've also just had a refund off it so right. f so for us as it, it's really really been good obviously prices are going up as well for everybody yeah so i think that if you can i mean it doesn't suit everybody because it'll depend on your roof and things like that but if you can have solar for me it's just it's a no-brainer really yeah it's, and you can whilst you may use more in winter because the days are shorter um, and your batteries might deplete if you look at it across the year yes. and averaged it out you're always gonna be um in the plus aren't you in terms of yeah and it, but the, the batteries are the fundamental element that have yes. changed it because yeah. in winter if you're at work in the day other than having your washing machine on and maybe a couple of timed appliances you can't at night time, you are going to be buying that electric back. Um, you're going to be selling it in the day for maybe 20p a kilowatt and buying it back at night for, you know, 30p, aren't you, or whatever it is. Yeah. Um, there's also something with batteries, which we were discussing with um, a supplier the other day. There's certain tariffs that are out there for charging cars. Yeah. So stuff, I think Octopus Go, I have one for an electric car. So between the hours of 12 and 4 o'clock uh, in the morning, I get electric, I think it's 5p a kilowatt. Yeah. There's an argument out there to have a battery, charge it up yeah. at 5p a kilowatt rather than buying it at 40p a kilowatt. And at night time when you're at home, just draw off your battery. Um, and the benefit of batteries um, is you can have as many as you want. Obviously, there's a cost. Um, the only downside to batteries right now is... There's only so much you can put in at once and there's only so much you can take out at once, isn't there? Yeah. So is that three kilowatts? So with these, we can take out about three kilowatts, which is a little bit of a downside. It's not so much of a downside now because we're getting paid so much for the energy. Yeah. So we're getting paid nearly the same as what we're buying it. Because I think we're paying 27 pence if we were going to buy it, which we're not buying any. And, and we, if we're selling it, we're getting around 20. So the difference is quite small now, yeah. Um, you know, so it's not as it's not as bad. But batteries for me are definitely the the game changer. Yeah, and even if you couldn't have solar panels, there's an argument to say that the batteries could also be as a standalone product. Yeah. yeah, but if you can charge up at night, yeah. obviously you get an, an additional benefit. Uh, we know we can take a look outside in a second. You've got an electric car. Yeah. You've got the charger, the Zappy charger. Yeah. So. Alan can be generating the day, you can charge your car up, you can put it into the batteries, you can use it into the house, or it can go out to the grid. Also the hot water as well. Yeah. So we've got it going into hot water on a solar divert. Got a tank just over there, haven't yeah. you? So that charges up. So really these panels are powering multiple appliances. What you have as well is a piece of technology which I was really impressed with, which is sort of an energy management system, isn't it? Where you can choose how you want it to be or it will do it as a recommendation so for example let's say uh, it's going to be cloudy in it's going to be sunny in the morning cloudy in the afternoon you could choose to charge your batteries up and prioritize your batteries and just take what you get from the solar in the afternoon because it's not going to be performing as well or you can dump it into your car you can sell it to the grid if you're not going to be driving the car for a week yeah and the batteries are full You've not really got any appliances that you want to use in the day. You can sell that into the grid. We can also, on the app, we can see every half an hour what the prices are. So at certain times of day, we could think, well, we might as well charge car because we're not going to get paid a lot for energy then. Yeah. Or we could think, well, we're not going to charge out. We'll just let it all go back to the grid. grid. Because it might be that we're getting paid 50p per kilowatt hour. So yeah. then it's like, let's send as much as we can it's back massive. to the grid. Because the energy market's dynamic now, isn't it? So it constantly move, it's based on demand, essentially. So it moves throughout the day. What you're going to think about here is there's a massive environmental benefit to this. 
when the grid is buying energy from Alan here, um, you know, every kilowatt hour they're buying, you're generating totally renewable. Um, there's no gas being burnt. So, you know, there is a bit of a, a myth in the UK that a lot of the energy that we have comes from renewable sources and comes from nuclear. It doesn't. I think it's something like half of the actual electricity that we use every day, whether you're plugging that into an electric car or you're turning your toaster on, comes from burning gas um, because gas is very calorific and it gives off a lot of energy. What you're doing here is generating electricity with zero cost to the environment and providing that into the grid. It's sort of strange to think that you could be generating solar energy here and your neighbour has got their washing machine on and you're potentially powering it. Quite a few of them if you look as well, because if we, it, we might be using 0.2 of a kilowatt or 200 watts in our house and we're producing 7,000. So if you think about it like that, it's going out. we could be going to 10 houses, feeding 10 houses. When we, so they're getting renewable energy even though they don't know they are. Yeah, and you could go around threatening to turn people's <laughs> washes off. <laughs> go collecting. But I think it's really impressive, obviously, it, this this technology, as it over the last sort of 24 months, seems to have evolved rapidly. Um, we'll take a look now at your energy system and how it works. Maybe look at the charger. Just one thing I was curious about was the actual installation. Uh, how long was? And your system is a bit different because you've got an in-roof system. Yes. It, how long did it take to install the kit? Um, in total, it took about a week because they had stripped all roof off. So they took all the roof off, put new la uh, felt and lats on, put an in-roof system in, and then put the tiles back on. So th th that's, an in-roof system is a lot more involved than an on-roof system. And the difference is just aesthetics. One sits flush with the yes. tile, yes. and one is a bracket that sits on top. Yeah, on so top. most people's gonna have an on-roof system yeah. because that's the quickest, it's cost the effective. cheapest, cost-effective way of doing it. I'm somebody that I want what I want, and. I didn't even want any quotes for on roof. I wanted in roof. Yeah. But that's just because I wanted in roof. Yeah. But that's definitely more expensive than on roof. And you don't always need to redo your roof, but your system's so big. Yeah. That it was like, well, 90% of the roof's coming off anyway. Yeah. You may as well refill, rebatten, yeah. and just sort it out at the same time. Roof work aside, if someone had an on roof system fitted, we've um from the research we've been doing that can be done in one to two days yeah so it's panels go on they're so advanced now in the sense that they are just plug and play yeah so the panels clip together the leads clip together you install your inverter you can have that in a loft or you can have it in a garage or wherever you want it um and then it's basically a case of wiring it back to the grid something to know this inverter's got a fan in it hasn't it <laughs> it's making a bit of noise yeah. The inverters that we've been looking at don't have fans in them because they only need to be handling four kilowatt. Yeah. Because this is handling more, yeah. it's got a cooling facility built in. So I know some people mount these in the loft. That potentially could be quite annoying in a loft because it's making a bit of a whirring noise depending on how much of a light sleeper you are. But you can get ones that are fanless. That's just because it's semi sort of commercial, that sort of stuff. Yeah, well, I mean, it, it, this is producing a lot of energy. So obviously yeah. it's got a cool it down on it and then the million dollar question hopefully it wasn't a million dollars how much did this system cost bear in mind you've got 12 kilowatt premium 16 kilowatt no so 12 kilowatt um, oh, yeah. panel array you've got 16 kilowatt battery yeah. you've got this inverter you've got an in roof system you had your roof read on what was that so so the total cost which i, I think it would be more now because Prices have gone up quite a lot. Yeah. I paid £17,000 for what I've got. Done. Done, finished for everything, which I think I think is quite a cheap price now for what, for what, I've, had, for what I've had done. Um, the way I looked at it was, I looked at what my energy would be, looked at their figures, but actually now, because energy prices have gone up so much since they told us them figures, it's gonna the payback for us is gonna be a lot lot sooner. We expected maybe about eight years to start with, eight nine years. I I, I think we could be paid back in four or five years now because of the savings on fuel for the car. So we're not paying petrol and diesel. 
Yeah. So that's a, that's an expense that might be hundred and fifty pound a month for there. We're not paying as much for the gas and electricity for the house, and then we're getting paid for what we're sending back. So it's <laughs> it's sort of a win-win, really. The benefit you've got here as well is you've got some energy independence, haven't you? Yes. In terms of if the electricity prices go up, that can only be a good thing for you because the buy rate from the yeah. grid is going to improve. Yeah. And you're not dependent on electricity. So whilst there's some initial investment costs, there are benefits. And you see the ben the minute this back and hear it, I know, you know, it's buzzing away. It's on now, it's generating electricity. There's finance packages available, isn't there? So seven and a half kilowatts here. Yeah. Well, my hair's gonna stick to it in a minute. Um, the Finance, yeah, yeah so finance. You know, there's low, a lot of support from finance companies to fund these sort of projects on people's homes because it does reduce people's outgoings um, and it's great for the environment and it is a solid piece of technology now. I think early days of solar, when you just got a four kilowatt system fitted and it was 25,000 quid, it was a pretty exclusive market. Yeah. If you had a basic solar package now without batteries, you can probably get that on your roof, four kilowatt for about five, six thousand pounds. Would that include batteries then as no. well? No, batteries are about another three thousand pounds. Okay. So if you called it ten thousand pounds to have an on roof system, sort of four or five kilowatt, um, to get your energy independence, and yet whilst you're not going to generate as much as you are, because obviously you're getting up to seven and a half. Yeah. If your roof orientation is the right way, um, not the right way, but the way where you'll capture most of the light in the day, you haven't got to double up that system, have you? You get benefits from it, but for a regular consumer who's just looking to reduce their energy costs and to do their bit for the environment, I think it's going to be a really affordable solution. It's just when we were here last time, it, we were just sort of transfixed it really. So we'll take a look at the energy management system. Where is it? It's on my app. It's on your app, yeah, that's why. Couldn't find it. Um, we'll have a look at that, and you can show us how you move energy around, how you decide, and that'll give us some indication from there, won't it? Cool. So this is the app for... This is the My Energy one. My Energy. Yeah, so this goes with a Zappi charger as well for car. So if we have a look on there, we can see, tick there where car is, so car's fully charged. We, are, we can set that so it's just solar, so it just when it's producing solar, it charges the car. If we have a look around at the house symbol, we can see there, at the minute, we're using 0.4 in the house. Right, okay, so that's like a TV or something? Just fridge and right. bits and bats. Yeah. We, don't, we don't actually have a TV, we're, we're quite sad, but... Um, I sometimes say that. And then we put in, into grid there, we put in 7.1 kilowatts into grid. And then if we go around to production, we're producing 7.6. So as you can see on there, it's, it's really good. So basically at the moment, 95% of everything that you're producing is going straight into the grid yeah. because your car's fully charged. Yes. Your batteries are fully charged. Yes. There's nothing going on in the house. Yeah. So if you, for you right now, you can sell that yeah. for whatever the rate is at the moment. Yeah. But when you come home tonight, if you've been selling all day and it's suddenly, I don't know, there's an apocalypse, you can use your batteries to run the house. Yeah, well, we'd, we'd use the solar as long as we as long as possible, obviously. Yeah, and then and then you'd use your batteries once once you need to. Right. Okay. So and then you can click into you can look on batteries. So you've got a different app for the batteries. We've got a different app for the batteries. So if we have a look on there, we can see that's one hundred percent charged on yeah. battery. So we know that it's it's charged. And then we've got a different app for um, the mixage cylinder. So we've got a cylinder on this. This is for your hot water. So this is for hot water. So again, that shows it's 99% full and it's at 66 degrees. So that again, that's been done by the solar. Yeah. So, so it's all, we're fully running this house as, as renewable if it, as you can, really. <laughs> the benefit of... I'll just show you this as well. If we go onto Octopus um, app, if we can see this, um, that this just shows you. I'll just show you for month here. Oh, we've okay. we've exported three hundred and so that's only this part of month. So this, this whatever we are, thirteen days in or whatever. So yeah, thirteen days in. So in the last thirteen days, we've exported three hundred and sixty-two back to grid, but we've only used five front grid. 
Wow. So that shows you how, how good it is. And then yeah. if we have a look at the, if I scroll down, if we have a look at the Agile tariff on there, we can actually see the pricing. Oh, so it's per 30 minutes. So it's per 30 minutes. Based on demand. So it's like it's peaking there at, for, just on that one screen, 33 pence. Yeah, so some of, it, some of it's up to 33, 34. It's not really dropped below 20 though, has it? No, it's, uh, it hasn't dropped below 20 at all on there. So right now... 40 pence there, look. So they're buying it from me at 40 pence at that time, between 6.30 and 7. So anything that I was sending back then, I'd be getting 40 pence for it. Wow, okay. So you, so you can see that I didn't account for this when I bought this. So, because I, I thought we were going to get like four pence. Yeah. So now this, this makes it, it's paying for itself a lot quicker. And this isn't a guarantee, so like with the feeding tariff, you would have been guaranteed X amount per pence per kilowatt for 20 years with an RPI increase. This is more dynamic, isn't it? Because this yes. is, if the energy market, if there's demand, um, then they're going to be paying high prices. If there's no demand, there's going to be paying low prices. I suppose if everyone starts getting solar, that might drop. You can fix that though at 7.5 if you wanted to. So, oh, okay. So you could fix it. So if, say for instance, we, we start going down, uh, prices start going down, which I, I don't think that's ever going to happen, but no. let's say they nice. did, um, then you could fix it at the 7.5, which... And that's just a set rate but, and they just buy it. And whether, and whether they would have bought it for 40p or bought it for a penny, you're yes. getting 6.5. 7.5. 7.5, so. And that would still stack up though, wouldn't it? it, it yeah. Because selling it back to the grid is the icing on the cake, isn't it? Absolutely. Like yes. it's not, that's not the purpose of, yeah. of having the install. The purpose of having the install is you don't need to buy from the grid. My, my reasoning really were more to do with I wanted to be greener. Yeah. Which is, you know, that's not, a lot of people, that might not be their decision. But by doing it, it's worked out amazing for us, saving us a fortune. Um, yeah, it's We've true. done lots of research around consumer surveys and feedback about, and people do want to be greener and they are conscious of the environment because it's in every paper, it's on every newsreel every day. The challenge for consumers is the cost. And I, I, and I, I mean, I've done lots of videos on this now on, on my Facebook and I've had millions of views and a lot of, the, um, a lot of people say it's going to take too long, 25 years to pay back. And, but there's a massive uh, misnomer out there. Yeah. yeah, they just don't understand because I, um, I mean, I got I got a bank loan so that I could afford to do what I've done, and the loan is it's next to no compared to what we're saving. Yeah, it, yeah it's yeah. worth it's so the offset is so different. It, yeah, this is the thing. Like I know, um, obviously, we sell gas boilers, and that's not always on trend at the moment. People have the same sort of assumptions, which you know, gas is super bad, and gas boilers are getting banned. Gas boilers are getting banned in new build in, in sort of five years. They're getting banned in residential homes currently in 13 years, but there isn't another solution. And the thing with gas boilers is not to the same degree as this, but what we try to do is sell packages and products that are very, very efficient. So 96 or 98% overall efficiency if you pair them with smart controls and proper water treatment. It's, there's a massive misconception out there about stuff like solar, gas bulbs, and what it actually costs to install, what it actually costs to run. I think this system that you've got here is... And I, I, I don't think there's no taking away from most people still going to need a gas boiler. Well, the option is you get a heat pump at 15 grand or... Well, not only that, a lot of people haven't got the space. So as you can see here, we've, we, it's a lot of space we've took up. We've got... Uh, yeah. cylinders and yeah. SRC pump outside and all this stuff. People don't have the space for all them different things. So it may be that for most people, they would still have a gas boiler. Yeah. And that might be that it's a hydrogen ready boiler. So in future, if they do go down the line of hydrogen ready, then, then that boiler would suit. And, and I think that that's probably going to be the solution for most people. But then along with that, you have renewable stuff as well. So you can have solar panels. If, if, you, if solar panels are not suitable for you, it might be that you just go for the batteries. 
Yeah. So you could have a smaller battery system where it can buy front grid at a lower price and then when you need it, you can use it at a, at a lower price because you bought it at a cheaper price. Yeah, you're not buying, so, so you're basically buying energy, storing it at 5p a, kilo, 5p a kilowatt and at night time when you're home, rather than buying it for 40p a kilowatt, you're just going to draw off your battery. Yeah. And it does take mindset. I think the same thing with gas boilers, same thing with solar. It, you can't just leave it all down to the technology. You have to make fundamental changes to your habits, you have to educate yourself a little bit about energy usage, when's good to use energy, when's not good to use energy. And it's just basic stuff, isn't it? That you could spend a little bit of time, but it could save you so much money. Yeah. Obviously, as a business for us, we want to make technology like this accessible to people. We want to make sure that gas boilers are affordable and are installed to a really high standard. It's, um, th but there is a piece for the consumer, which is you do have to do a little bit of research and a bit of education, and then you can benefit greatly from this technology. Um, so I think that was really good, to be honest. I'm absolutely um, blown away with it. I think it's a really, really interesting system. Obviously, it's not a product we sell right now, um, but even for us, it's a product that we just think is going to be revolutionary in market. And like I said, coming back to it when we, when we were here last time and you showed us for five minutes, we were just like, oh my, this is, this is brilliant. So it's great to see it working real time on that app and seeing what you are selling to the grid, how little energy you've had to buy from the grid. I, I think it'd be really good as well for a national company to get involved in this where yeah. they can be on Trustpilot and they can, you know, customers got Standardise to Standardise it. Yeah, you know. Yeah, and that's the, the, the challenge... Um, right now is I think there's a huge demand in the market Absolutely. Um, and there's a lot of because um, there's a lot of companies trying to enter it but obviously you've got a really high quality system here what you don't want is a system installed that's not up to standard yeah. or you have to be really careful about what people are telling you you are going to save again that comes down to consumer research a salesman's going to tell you you're going to you're going to save hundreds of thousands of pounds probably on a bit of kit you can do the math and hope for this video um, will help you understand a little bit more about how it works. And if anybody's got any questions as well, if you put them in this video, this will be on the Heatable channel, but I will come on to the video and I'll try and answer them the best I can. Yeah, that'd be great. So if you've got any questions about the package, how long it took, how it worked, you know, um, do you have any preference of manufacturers, any questions you've got there, put them on and then, um, yeah, we'll answer them with Alan. That'd be, that'd be fantastic. Cool. Brilliant. Right, let's go. It's absolutely roasting.